Hello everyone, welcome to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on limits. If you haven't already, make sure to check out some of my past videos here. Click that little I in the corner and it'll get you there. Otherwise, today we are talking about continuity and how we can use limits to see if a function is continuous or not. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Question of the day, what is a continuous function? So I have some pictures for us here. This one on the left side is a continuous function because I can draw the entire function without having to lift my pen, right? I never have to lift it up. That was beautiful, gorgeous, 10 out of 10. My other function right here on the right, as I'm drawing, notice right here, I have to pick up my pen in order to fill in this little dot. And now I pick up my pen to go back up and continue on. This is not a continuous function because I can't draw it smoothly in one stroke. So officially we have a real definition for this, not just the pen test, but you can always use the pen test. So a function f is continuous at some value, x is equal to a, provided that first off the limit as x approaches a exists. So that limit needs to exist. The actual function evaluated at a also needs to exist. And these two first two options need to be equal to one another. So that means the limit exists and it goes to where that function is. So we're going to go ahead and see some examples of this. It's not as interesting to find functions that are continuous. You could probably label a lot of them. It's more interesting to look at functions that are not continuous or discontinuous. So we're going to look at different types of functions. First, we have the limit as x approaches 2 of cosine of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. I always suggest trying to factor if you can. We can tell our illegal value here is going to be 2 because when we plug that in, 2 minus 2 equals 0, and we cannot divide by 0. So let's go ahead and factor. So notice here my x minus 2 divide out. But that means we're going to have a whole at x is equal to 2. Now let's go ahead and evaluate the limit. So now we have the limit as x approaches 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and use direct substitution on this. So when I plug it in, I end up getting cosine of 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. And so here we have the limit as x approaches 2 is going to approach this value. But actually, we're going to have a hole there because our actual function is not defined at 2. So this is called a removable discontinuity. It's where we have a hole in our function and there's nowhere to pick up our pen to. We just got to pick it up and move it. So let's go ahead and look at other types of discontinuities. Here we have a piecewise function and we have our function is broken up at x is equal to 0. So this means I'm actually going to do two limits, and I'm going to approach 0 from the left side and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side. So on the left side, I need to use the part of the function when x is less than or equal to 0. So here I have x squared plus 1. And on the right side, I'm going to use my other function, 3x plus 5. I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution. So when I plug in 0 here, I get 0 squared plus 1, which is equal to just 1. My other function, I get 3 times 0 plus 5, which is just equal to 5. So notice here that our f of 0 is equal to 0 squared plus 1, which is equal to 1. But this is only equal to one side of our limits. In order for this function to be continuous, it would have to be that all of these are equal. But that 5 is not equal. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like in the graph. This is actually what we call a jump discontinuity because our function jumps from a value of 1 all the way up to a value of 5. It's like your pencil jumps up. So this is another type of discontinuity. Let's see another example. So here we have the limit as x approaches 1 of 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 all over x minus 1. If we look at our denominator, we're going to tell x equals 1 is illegal, right? We can't plug that in or else we divide by 0, which is a big no-no. So what we need to do is take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side, and again, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look as x approaches 1 from the left side. I'm going to use direct substitution for the numerator. So here I get 2 times 1 squared, 
plus 3 times 1 plus 1. Adding this up, this up, I get 2 plus 3 plus 1 is equal to 6. So my numerator is approaching 6. Now our denominator, this is where we need to choose a value that's really close to the left side of 1. I'm going to choose 0 0.9. So if I plug this in, I get 0 0.9 minus 1, which is equal to negative 0 0.1. So that means my denominator is going to be approaching 0 from the negative side. And so this acts like the limit which this goes off to negative infinity because 6 divided by a super small negative number shoots down to negative infinity. Now let's go ahead and look at as we approach 1 from the right side. This tells me my numerator is going to approach that same value of 6, but now let's see what our denominator approaches. So I'm going to choose 1.1 this time. 1.1 minus 1 is equal to positive 0.1. So our denominator is approaching 0 from the right side. 6 divided by a small positive number grows real big until we go up to infinity. So notice again, our left and right sided limits are not equal to each other. This first one is negative infinity, and the second one is positive infinity. Let me go ahead and write that out. So we have these two limits are not equal, so they're not continuous. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the graph. So we have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1. We have as x approaches 1 from the left side, we're going down to negative infinity. And on the right side, we're going up to positive infinity. This is called an infinite discontinuity. Let me write that out. Because they're approaching two different infinities, sometimes they approach the same infinity, but whenever there's that vertical asymptote, we have an infinite discontinuity. We have another type of discontinuity to look at here. We have a limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of sine of 1 over x. If we remember, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x shoots up to positive infinity. 1 divided by a small positive number goes to infinity. So this is similar to the limit as y approaches positive infinity of sine of y. Which remember, we said this is oscillating. If you don't remember that, you can go ahead and check out my previous video. I'll link it right here. But we talk about oscillating functions. But this limit actually doesn't exist, which tells me my original limit also does not exist. This is called an oscillating discontinuity. I have a beautiful photo for us. Let me go ahead and write that out. And that's because we actually can't plug in the value of 0. So it's oscillating really, really close around zero, and it's going absolutely crazy that we can't actually take the limit of it because it never lands on a number. So this is an oscillating discontinuity. These are the different types of discontinuities we have. But overall, Allison advice, to find discontinuities, you just look for the illegal values, whatever you can't divide by, whatever you can't take the square root of, on and on. You're just looking for illegal values. So that is all I have for us today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and comment other problems, videos, topics that you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.